Well, greetings out there in YouTube land and welcome aboard here for part four of our video series on how to completely scratch build a vintage amplifier. In this chapter, we're going to discuss how to design an amplifier cabinet for our Supro 6422. Uh, now, I have a certain kind of special ways that I do this, and I'm going to share them with you. Uh, we're going to find a nice way to prepare scale drawings and also uh, a way to allow the internal components of the amplifier to determine its outer dimensions. If that sounds at all interesting, then please stay tuned. Let's take a look at a couple possibilities here for the speaker for our Supro build. Um, these are identical, believe it or not. Now, as you can see down here, this is a Jensen speaker, and it's from the uh, 1968, the eighth week. So it's, it's close. Uh, what was the Supro was 65 to 66. So this isn't far off. Now, they're both ceramic speakers. They're both C12Qs, but one has the cover over the ceramic magnet and the other one doesn't. This takes up quite a bit of space, so I'm going to uh, make measurements of both and then design around either this one with the cover or around this one without the cover. Okay, first we measure the diameter of the uh, magnet uh, cover and then the diameter of the speaker basket mark it down on our sheet of paper and then for the depth uh, put a straight edge across the back of either the cover or the magnet and measure the distance from the table and in this case it appears to be about uh, six and a quarter inches so I end up with the speaker being 12 inches uh, in diameter magnet cover is a uh, four and a half and the cover height is two and three quarters, leaving three and a half for the basket for an overall height of six and a quarter. I'm going to do the same with the speaker that does not have the magnet cover. And it turns out that the uh, speaker without the cover over the ceramic magnet is about one and three quarters inches shorter from front to back than the one with the cover. So I'll have to see in my cabinet design if I have room for the covered uh, speaker or if I have to use the uncovered one. Now while the speaker is very important for determining the depth of the cabinet from front to back, uh, in this case uh, the reverb tank is going to determine the inner width of the cabinet. And it comes out to 16 and 3 quarters inches. And although it's not as important, I also measured the width which uh, overall is 4 and a quarter inches and the height which is one and a half. And let's take some measurements here on the power transformer. Uh, it weighs nearly four pounds. It's a good husky transformer. It gives me a little more faith than my current calculations. Also it should be noted there's two different styles of transformer. Now this one's going to sink down into the chassis. So I'm going to have to cut a hole this size, let it sink down, and then it will mount with these studs. The other type uh, has feet on the bottom and just attaches to the surface of the chassis. Now that's a lot easier to use, but uh, it's going uh, when you use that type of transformer, you have the overall height protruding outward, which can be a problem. In this case, because it's going to be chassis mounted right here, there will only be this much of it protruding toward the speaker, so it won't be uh, really much of a clearance problem. So uh, I have my overall measurements, uh, three and a quarter inch overall height, uh, three inches across, two and a half inches deep, and uh, two inches will be protruding toward the speaker from the rear of the vertical hanging uh, chassis. Now as you can see it really helps to have your metal parts handy um, to take these measurements before you start designing your cabinet. Key to all scratch bills is the sniff test uh, that is performed by your pets. They have to check all the components and see if they pass muster. Okay, uh, now we're going to start with a blank sheet of paper and we're going to design our cabinet. 
I tend to make cabinets just about as small as I can because the last thing I want to lug around is some big old steamer trunk full of cinder blocks. Okay, I like to keep them uh, compact and uh, fairly light if possible. And I'm going to show you a method here by which you can use your measurements from your metal parts that we just took and uh, actually let the cabinet design itself. And because we really don't want to draw this cabinet life-size and have to tape a bunch of pieces of paper together to do it, uh, let's use some sort of reduction uh, formula here, ratio. And instead of a numerical one where we have to divide every inch of our cabinet by like 6.8 or something silly, uh, let's use a ruler like this that has inches on top and centimeters on the bottom. When you take your measurements of your parts, you measure them with the inch ruler. But then when you draw your diagram, you're going to use the centimeter ruler. In other words, if the part or item that you're going to draw measures 5 inches on an inch ruler, then you turn the ruler around and draw the line 5 centimeters long on your drawing. When you do this, it's a 2.54 to 1 ratio where you'll shrink your drawing without having to do any math at all. Now, step one, I'm going to draw the speaker. Uh, I drew it here and it is 12 centimeters from the edge of the basket flange to the other edge. And it's 3.5 centimeters of basket depth, 1 centimeter, or which equals 1 inch, of magnet thickness. I also drew the cover over the magnet, but to be honest with you, it just there was so much dead space and it was going to make the cabinet so thick, I decided to go without the cover, even though I just love it because it has that really nice Jensen medallion on it. Okay, so now I have my bare magnet speaker drawn uh, to scale uh, using the centimeter ruler. I'm going to draw from the ends of the speaker basket uh, flange here, one inch or one centimeter down, and then I'm going to draw a three-quarter inch square there and a three-quarter inch square up here. These are the ends of the cleats that we're going to use to hold the cabinet together. If you're not accustomed to the term cleat or to making cabinets, just relax because when it gets time to make this cabinet, I will explain this and demonstrate it to you. Then I come out from the uh, face of the speaker one half inch or one half centimeter in my scale and draw my speaker baffle vertically. Then at the, uh, I have the speaker baffle end right here at the top of the cleat and bottom of the cleat and then just draw these straight lines straight back in both directions. How long they are doesn't matter right now because uh, we're going to figure that out. Next, I space out about a half inch, or in this case, uh, one half of a centimeter, and draw a vertical line. This is going to be the rear of my metal chassis. Okay, this is going to give me a little bit of space here. And uh, just uh, because I think it'll look nice, I'm going to draw the horizontal or the floor of my chassis uh, right along the midline of the speaker. And I think three inches wide is about right for a chassis from my own experience. So I've drawn my line over here three inches and now I'm going to draw the vertical uh, line here and that will determine the inside rear of my cabinet. Uh, these lines here are the, the inside of the floor and this would be the inside of the top. So what we'll end up with is the interior drawing to dimension of the cabinet. And the interior is really what's important because that's where all the clearance of the metal parts must take place. Okay, so I've come across three inches here and I put a uh, one half inch lip uh, for on the metal chassis coming up this way and a about a one half inch lip coming down. Then I drew the rear panel that's going to cover the opening here in the chassis. This will be like the back upper back door of the cabinet and it's going to be a half inch thick just like the speaker baffle and I have it come down like maybe a half inch below the bottom of the chassis. Uh, down here then I, I'm going to have a two inch 
rise that's going to present sort of a like a back wall so that the uh, reverb tank I'm going to draw it in here and then your cord your um, foot switch and things like that can fit inside here and when you tilt the cabinet it won't all slide out the back okay now let's take a look at our finished side view um, <clears throat> we have our chassis drawn in we have our rear panel that covers the opening in the chassis. We have a bottom wall here to conceal a reverb tank and hold the cords and other things inside. And I finished the uh, top and bottom with three quarter inch or three quarter centimeter in this case wood pieces that are going to of course wrap all the way around the cabinet and I'm going to use a router to round the edges so now this is just the same as if I took a chainsaw God forbid and cut right through the center of the amplifier and we see our metal components um, chassis speaker and reverb tank now I'm also going to draw the uh, power transformer up here to be sure that it clears the speaker now I've gone back and measured each of the dimensions with my centimeter ruler but written them down as inches to translate back to my full size uh, dimensions here and as you can see I've marked them this will help me to pick out uh, the sizes of lumber and metal that I need to build the chassis and the cabinet. Uh, so uh, this has completed then our cross-sectional side view now we're going to have to turn it uh, 90 degrees and do a rear view to get our width dimensions. I know this sounds backwards. A lot of people start out with some sort of dreamed up dimension, build it and hope to God that everything will fit inside. And I do just the opposite. I build around all the uh, immovable and uncrushable metal parts and then let that dictate what the outside dimensions are. As it is right now, uh, the outside height is going to be 15 and a half inches from the top to the bottom, and the cabinet thickness will be from the outside rear to the outer edge of the front, 10 inches. As a frame of reference, uh, it will be one inch shorter and one inch thicker than a Princeton Reverb cabinet, which is pretty darn compact especially since this has a 12-inch speaker. I was cleaning Rusty's doghouse out the other day and came upon this uh, photograph of Nikola Tesla. And on the back is this inscription. Now, I guess Rusty was his assistant before he became mine. So, he may have forgotten that he had this. I'm going to take this out and present it to him and let's see how he reacts. Hey, Rusty. Look what I found in your doghouse. Your autographed picture of Nikola Tesla. And I found this old dog cookie. Now I know which one you're going to... Oh, what? Oh, what a disappointment. Okay, let's take a look at our drawing from the rear aspect. Um, as you can see, I've drawn in the reverb tank here at the bottom. It's 16 and 3 quarters inch. Uh, wide. I've given about a half inch, or in this case to scale, a half centimeter clearance on either side. So our interior width is 17 and 3 fourths inches. I've also drawn in the line that represents the uh, lower rear panel. And this line represents the upper rear panel edge. This line here represents the chassis. And of course I've drawn in the speaker. Now all we have to do is add three quarters of an inch or to scale three quarters of a centimeter to show our outside dimensions all the way around this and we'll be finished. Okay, here's our uh, completed rear view of the cabinet with the three quarter inch wooden sides and top drawn in. And using our centimeter ruler, we go back and measure it, then convert it to inches. We find that the overall width is uh, 19 and a quarter inches, which is a little bit smaller than a Princeton Reverb. The height is 15 and a half inches, which is, a, I believe, an inch shorter than the Princeton Reverb. And this uh, vertical height was dictated by our side view drawing. Okay, this rear view drawing is what dictates the width because it has to clear 
the reverb tank. Uh, and from this now, I know that my uh, lower rear panel is 17 and 3 quarters by 2. I know that my upper rear panel is 7, is 7 and 3 quarters by 17 and 3 quarters inches. And uh, that gives me all the dimensions I need to start building my cabinet. I also drew the little rubber feet down here in the handle just for fun. One final drawing is necessary, and that is of the top. The reason being that in this uh, type of design that we're going to be using, uh, there's going to be a cutout uh, along the rear part of the top of the amp that is going to expose the chassis so that we can have our controls mounted here on the chassis and be able to reach them from the top of the amplifier. Let's look at some of the considerations here. We have our half inch back door in place, which is going to push the chassis forward. Remember the chassis was three inches wide. One inch will be hidden under the top panel of the amp. The other two inches will be visible and this is where our controls will be located. Uh, the, here is the speaker baffle uh, with the speaker uh, drawn and you can see that we do have clearance. I went ahead and drew the handle on top too which will probably be centered. Now some of you may have noticed that I've recessed my speaker baffle here somewhat uh, at the front of the cabinet. And the reason for this is uh, one of my trademarks for my amplifiers is that I go back and do research and find the old grill designs from the uh, 30s, 40s, and 50s amps and then incorporate them into my cabinets. So this panel that you see here is simply recessed into the front frame of the cabinet and uh, has some interesting like grill bars, either diagonal or zigzag or whatever that, that will make it look like the old Supro uh, or National amplifiers. I'll show you how I do this when we build a cabinet. Well, that's about it uh, for Chapter 4 of our never-ending saga of the scratch-built Supro amp. In our next installment, mercifully, the talking will diminish and the constructing will begin. Uh, we're going to attack a big sheet of steel and turn it into a hopefully nice chassis. I warn you that I employ Stone Age methods, but the end result usually turns out pretty good. So stay tuned if that sounds interesting. Thanks for watching. See you soon.